Today I'm going to show you 5 different types of shots which enhance your GoPro travel videos. For each type of shot I also show you my recommended settings and camera movements so you have in this tutorial an all-in-one guide to make your GoPro travel videos look better. Hey, how are you doing? Today's video is probably going to be a slightly longer one as I want to cover the 5 different types of shots I'm going to show you very detailed. So let's start right away with the first one. If you are using your GoPro for travel videos you probably want to get some amazing shots of the landscape you are at. A big mistake a lot of amateur creators make is using a panning shot to show off the location. These shots usually look very unprofessional in a final edit and there is a better way to film landscapes. The dolly forwards shot is my recommendation for you guys. It's a very simple camera movement where you move your camera in a straight line forwards and that's perfect for a beginner filmmaker as everyone is able to learn this camera movement very quickly. And here I have one more tip for you, if you want the most stable dolly forwards camera movement and you don't have a gimbal, try to walk very smoothly. Bend your knees and while walking try not to move your hands up or down. It looks a bit stupid but it helps to get more stable shots. Then I also recommend you using a frame rate of 60 because like that you can slow your footage down twice and get even more stable results. This dolly forwards camera movement is also a great one for your drone footage. Paired with a tilt up movement of your gimbal you can get extremely beautiful nature shots and you don't have to be the best drone pilot to nail this shot. Now before we move on to the second type of shot I want to show you I need to tell you one more thing which not only improves your landscape shots but most of your GoPro shots in general. To make your GoPro footage look more cinematic you need to think about your composition and the movements in your shot. Take this shot as an example. It's a normal dolly forwards camera movement but there is not much going on in the video as you basically just see the horizon. But if you have a look at this one which was actually made at the exact same location you see how much of a difference it makes if you have a well composed shot with a lot of movement in your image. And the only thing I did to level up this shot was taking the same shot 15 meters to the right where I was able to get this dolly forwards landscape shot in between some trees. So if we have again a look at those two clips side by side it should now be very clear which one the winner is. And if you also think that the right clip looks better then let me know by hitting the like button. Alright let's move on to the second type of shot which can enhance your GoPro travel videos. If you know how to get great shots of people that can not only make your GoPro videos look better but these shots will also add more value to the story of your travel video. I will talk about that right after I have showed you my top 3 camera movements and settings to get great looking people footage. The first one is the zoom in shot. You need again the dolly forwards camera movement and here you have to be very careful that you only move your upper body and not your legs to get the most stable results. Again I use here 60 frames per second to be able to slow my footage down twice. Then the second shot is another dolly forwards camera movement while moving your GoPro upwards. Instead of those 60 frames per second I was using so far I used here 120 because this shot looks the best slowed down 4 times. Then the third shot is a tilt down shot. I filmed this shot with my Hero 7 and only 60 frames per second because on the GoPro Hero 7 Hypersmooth wasn't available for 2.7k 120 and I needed the additional stabilization as I was walking on a bridge to get this shot and therefore I couldn't concentrate to move smoothly. I had to concentrate that I don't fall into the water. Now each of those different shots tell a different emotion and that's why knowing different types of shots are crucial to make great looking travel videos as emotions are very important in storytelling. For example the zoom shot is a more thoughtful or even mysterious shot as you see her close up and the zoom movement underlines those emotions. The second shot I showed you is a more adventurous or marching shot and I think it's self explaining why. And then the first shot makes the character appear small and vulnerable. 
This tilt down shot is not only great for GoPros, it's an even more powerful shot for drones as the emotion there is much stronger because the person appears even smaller and more vulnerable. I am by the way including these drone shots because nowadays a lot of GoPro creators also own one including me and those shots just look so nice that I think it's worth it to share them with you. But for now, that's it for people shots. I have made an entire video covering only this topic, so if you want to learn more about people shots, check out the other video. And it would be also really nice if you subscribe right now to my channel. That not only helps me, but also you, as you won't miss my future videos where you are going to learn a lot about GoPro videography. Alright, so the next type of shot I want to cover are underwater shots. As most of you guys probably film all your GoPro videos alone, I show you three different camera positions instead of movements, so you can get the best underwater shots of yourself. The first position is the most known one. Just use a selfie stick, extend it to around half a meter and stretch your arm completely so you are in frame. This is the most common type of underwater shot. For those kinds of shots I have three preferred settings. The first one is 4K with 60 frames per second so I can slow my footage down and I still have a resolution of 4K. The second one is 2.7K with 120 frames per second so I can get some really slow slow motion shots and the last one is 4K 30 with super view turned on. The great thing filming underwater is that you don't see any fisheye effect. That's why I always film my underwater shots with the widest field of view possible. So that was the first camera position, but if you extend your selfie stick even more than half a meter, you can get completely different looking shots. That's why for the second camera position you need to be able to extend your selfie stick at least to 1 meter 80. With the Selfie Stick 270 Pro that's no problem. So once you extend the Selfie Stick that far you can get three different nice looking angles. The first one is the same as for the previous camera position with the big difference that you are further away of the camera. Then the second angle is one where you film yourself from the side. Here you have to be aware that your selfie stick will feel really heavy because of the resistance on the water. As you move your selfie stick sidewards there is now a lot more pressure on your stick and you might have to hold it with two hands. I try not to but if I extend my selfie stick to 2 meters 70 then sometimes I do have to hold it with two hands and that makes swimming harder. I by the way use the exact same settings as the ones I showed you for the first on water camera position. Now the third great looking angle is one where you film yourself from below. For this angle you need again a selfie stick you can extend pretty far and then you basically just film yourself from below and against the sun to have a nice contrast. Having the selfie stick in such a position makes swimming almost impossible, so you probably are only able to film yourself swimming on one and the same place. I use here again the same on the water settings I showed you in the beginning. Alright, so the third camera position is actually the contrary than the previous angle I showed you. For this shot you want to fully extend your selfie stick with the 270 Pro, that's 2 meters 70. Then you basically just swim and film yourself from above the water. Here I like to use 4K 30 or 60, I don't use 120 frames per second because there is not a lot of movement in this shot as swimming is a bit hard while holding the selfie stick out of the water. Then what also looks cool is if you let your selfie stick fall into the water and continue the shot on the water. This movement is also great to make nice transitions. So before we head over to the fourth type of shot which will improve your GoPro travel videos, I just wanted to say that I have created a free 45 minutes GoPro filmmaking training where I reveal my top 10 secrets to make cinematic looking GoPro videos. If you want to check that out, just click on the link in the description which will bring you to my homepage of my GoPro filmmaking course and there you will immediately see the free training. It would be a great preparation for your summer GoPro videos. But now let's move on. A very underestimated type of shot to make better travel videos are vlog shots. Of course these are not the most cinematic shots at all, but if you struggle telling a story with video clips and music only, including vlog parts might be the solution for you to improve your story. I am only going to tell you my favorite vlog settings because what you exactly say in your vlog depends on you and the video you want to make. 
So I use 4K with 30 frames per second because you don't need slow motion when you are talking. Then, depending where I film my vlogs, I change between linear wide or super view. All right, so the last type of shot I want to cover are drone shots. These shots will improve your GoPro travel videos very much because you get a whole new perspective. It is also worth it for you to stick around if you don't own a drone, because the shots you are going to see right now are the most amazing ones I have ever made. They are just incredibly beautiful. I am going to show you my four favorite drone moves and then I'm quickly going to tell you which drones I use because I keep getting this question. So let's start with my favorite move and that's a dolly backwards shot. This shot looks especially great if you fly close to objects such as trees. It is a hard one to get because you need to fly a clear straight line without crashing and depending how fast you do that it's almost impossible. I actually don't want to know how many drones Sam Kohler already has crashed. Then the second move I use very often is a dolly forwards shot close to the ground. It is also a bit a risky one especially if you fly in sport mode where all sensors are turned off but you can get really nice shots with it. My third kind of drone shot I use very often is one where you tilt your gimbal to the bottom. This perspective looks really nice if you have two types of ground such as the beach and the water or a forest and just normal ground. And last but not least I also use very often a dolly forwards shot combined with flying up higher. I like to use this shot if there are palm trees or a forest so you can first start your flight at a low level and then slowly fly over those trees. Like that you not only get a lot of movement in your shot you also reveal what's behind the horizon. Alright so these were my top 4 drone moves. I went over them pretty quickly because I had no idea if you actually like to see drone tips. But yeah, if you like them, let me know in the comments and if a lot of you guys are indeed interested in drones, I can make an entire tutorial for you covering drone tips. Now there is one last thing missing I promised you and that's the answer what kind of drones I use. I started with the DJI Mavic Air. It's a very good drone but there were things which I also didn't like. There is no reason now to talk about those as they all got fixed with the Mavic Air 2. But right now the drone I'm using all the time is the Mavic 2 Pro. It is more expensive but in my opinion worth the extra money as you get a much better image quality with the bigger sensor it has, you have a better color profile to work with and the Mavic 2 Pro is also very small to travel with as everything fits in this bag. Alright, so now the very last thing. If you want to learn more about GoPro videography, feel free to check out my GoPro filmmaking course with over 40 high quality and detailed GoPro tutorials. In the course I cover topics I don't cover here on my YouTube channel and if you join the course you not only get lifetime access with all the regular updates included, you also get personal mentoring of me for your GoPro videos. The link is in the description and as said previously there you will also find the free 45 minutes GoPro filmmaking training where I reveal my top 10 secrets to create cinematic looking GoPro videos. So that's it, see you in the next video. Thank you.